Before I start the presentation, I would like to thank the IEA and has the All Recovery Technology Collaboration Program for inviting me to talk in this event. I'm Lirio Quintero, Senior Technical Advisor at Baker Hughes. I have 37 years of professional experience in the oil industry, including 24 years with Baker Hughes in fluid technology and enhanced oil recovery project. My talk is about um, the advances in chemical EOR in the last two decades. What are the major chemical EOR production methods that contribute to daily oil production? Chemical EOR production comes from polymer flow, polymer surfactant flow, and alkali surfactant polymer, followed by polymer flow. As you can see in the figure from Vision Game Market Report. Global chemical UR market is projected to have a moderate growth over the near long term. Well, this covered only 2020-2026, with an annual growth rate of 4.9%. It is known that the EOR projects are affected when the oil price go down. We had various oil price waves with oil price fluctuating between $16.5 per barrel in a hundred thirty two dollars per barrel in the last two decades. That bring us to the next point. What changes in the last two decades drove the growth in chemical UR? New surfactants and polymer are available in the market. In particular, polymer a reasonable cost for polymer flow. The quality Commercial polymer have considerably improved in the last few years, which result in, in a ha high well injectivity. Alkali surfactant polymer and polymer flux use was extended to heavy oil reservoir applications with much higher viscosity. Hybrid technology such as alternate or combined chemical injection with gas injection emerge as promising EUR methods in at the stage of pilot application. There is better understanding on how to scale up laboratory formulation to fill scale. This occurred because um, simulators now capture almost all the parameters of the free rock interaction well enough to make accurate production predictions. Uh, one more thing is continuous improvement in mixed procedure and facility for field site preparation of polymer and surfactant blends. What are the advances in polymer flooding? The major type of polymer for EUR are hydrolyzed polyacrylamide, associated thickening polyacrylamide, and copolymer that combine polyacrylamide, polyacrylamide with uh, mono, monomers such as acrylic acid and others. The hydrolyzed Polyacrylamide polymers are available over a wide range of molecular weights, up to about 30 million, to cover a broad range of salinity and temperature applications. The quality of the um, hydrolyzed polyacrylamide has considerably improved, um, which results in high well injectivity. The limitation of the polyacrylamide, a high temperature and salinity, is overcome 
by using new associated polyacrylamide polymer and copolymer. These new polymers can be used in brine that contain high amount of calcium and magnesium at high temperature. That means can be used in seawater without removal of calcium and magnesium. Also, biopolymers such as cleroglucan are good alternatives for short UR projects where um, biodegradation and toxicity previously limit uh, the use of polymer for UR. Cleroglucan um, biopolymer is an emerging technology with high uh, potential to be very effective. However, it's less developed than synthetic polymer. It's at the level of uh, pilot um, test. Additional advances associated with polymer flow are design of surface facilities and mixing procedures for field application of polymer solutions are now well established by a few companies. There are companies that provide service of permanent design facility and modular facility. Also, water softening for polymer solution is now a mature technology. For that reason, it's less expensive and enable the use of polymers at high temperatures. A challenge of polymer injection is the polymer de degradation. The use of a certain type of inflow control device minimizes polymer degradation. The ICD are choking devices that balance the flow along the wall board. These are, uh, there are various types of ICD design. One of them is ICD friction-based uh, design, which allows for a larger flow area. This type of ICD produces a distributed pressure drop over a large area. The large area prevents shearing of polymer during injection and minimizes plugging as a result of the larger flow area. The figures show data collected about polymer degradation as a function of flow rate for four design of high-CD technology. The purple line correspond to ICD friction design, the ICD helix. As you can see here, um, the maximum degradation uh, obtained was uh, 4%, which is very good results. Uh, the polymer degradation target for this study was um, below of 10%. The evolution of ICD technology has been very beneficial to address the issue of polymer degradation during downhole injection. Surfactant for um, alkaline surfactant polymer and surfactant polymer flow. New high performance surfactant were developing in recent years. Some recent surfactant development include internal ketone sulfate, which are very soluble in seawater, alcohol alkoxy carboxylate, extended propoxylate ethoxylate sulfate, and extended propoxylate ethoxylate carboxylate in a broad range of molecular weight. The ethylene oxide and propylene oxide of the extended surfactant improves salinity and hardness tolerance. Extended sulfonate and carboxylate surfactant are very stable at high temperature, up to uh, 250 Fahrenheit. So, extended al al alcohol alkoxy sulfate are very synergistic with alkyl benzene sulfonate or with internal olefin sulfonate. Advances in surfactant technology development result 
in microemulsion Windsor type 3 formation in a broad range of salinity and all wear, all wire ratio. As shown in the microemulsion phase behavior activity map presented in this slide. Co-solvents for ASP in surfactant polymer flow. One of the benefits of having a co-solvent to EOR surfactant formulations is the reduction of the microemulsion viscosity. The co-solvents also stabilize macroemulsions or viscous emulsion formed in the polar media, which reduce the retention of surfactant in the viscous emulsions. And it's also known that cosolvent can be used to alter phase behavior or to shift phase behavior and raise aqueous stability of surfactant formulation. Examples of traditional cosolvents are tecbutyl alcohol, isobutyl alcohol, isopropanol, and glycol ethers. Triethylene glycol monobutylator is an effective cosolvent for microemulsion formulations. New cosolvents for chemical UR include short chain alcohol, such as C4 with short ethylene oxide chain, phenol ethoxylated with short chain or ethylene oxide, um, uh, propylene oxide with short chain. Examples, uh, other example is um, amine with short chain ethylene oxide. Examples of new co-solvent are uh, reporting publications are uh, propoxylate, ethoxylate, uh, isobutyl alcohol, and also propoxylate, ethoxylate phenol. Chemicals for scalp prevention in ASP flow. Carbon A and silicate scaling in production well and in flow line is a common problem in ASP flow the oil field. The elevated pH of the ASP is a proper environment to produce a calcite and silicate scales. Scale control is critical to minimize the failures of artificial leaf pumps, <coughs> such as electrical submersible pumps. Better scale inhibitor and scale mitigation plan have been developed to treat to treat scale precipitation. Scale inhibitor and scale equipment formulated with sulfonate inhibitor, fofonate inhibitor, and chelating agent are very effective treatments. This is a, a scanning electron microscopy photo of carbon A scales in alkali surfactant polymer flow. It's the picture in the top. Then the second picture in the bottom with higher magnification shows the result of the addition of a, a scale inhibitor. You can notice the minimum scale are formed. Other Improvements in chemical EOR are better laboratory procedures to screening surfactant for EOR, better lab procedures for phase behavior study, rheology evaluation, surfactant absorption measurements to determine the performance of chemical formulation at the lab scale. Improvement in core flow test procedures to demonstrate effectiveness through 
outcrop cores and reservoir cores. There is, there is a better understanding how to scale up laboratory formulation to fill a scale. To do pilot design and estimate production forecast. In the past, uh, polymer injectivity was higher than expected in some projects. Um, this occurred because uh, simulators did not capture all the parameters of the fluid rock interaction well enough to make an accurate prediction. Those issues were captured to improve the reservoir simulator and pilot design in recent years. And one more thing is that continuous improvement in mixing procedures and facility design for field site preparation of polymer and surfactant blends. A closing summary is that um, the combination of new technologies developing in the last two decades, together with improvements of laboratory procedures and simulation work, enable success of polymer flow, surfactant polymer flow, and alkaline surfactant polymer flow in pilots and in field applications, field implementations. An additional remark is that in order to increase the number of chemical EOR projects that involve surfactants, it is very important to accelerate development of sufficient surfactants with low cost raw material. Thank you very much for your attention. Now um, I hand it to the moderator.